Hey there everybody. Welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Happy Thanksgiving. This time Steve's got something special for us. We're gonna do our regular movie and then we're gonna go back for seconds. Oh Johnny! <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Tired Old Queen at the Movies. <sighs> Johnny, I wanted for Thanksgiving to do two of my favorite sophisticated comedies. Both star William Powell and Myrna Loy. The Thin Man from 1934 and After the Thin Man from 1936. Now these, The Thin Man was based on a novel by Dashiell Hammett and it was supposedly based about his relationship with Lillian Hellman. And in it, uh, he plays Nick Charles and he's a former private detective and he has married this wealthy younger woman named Nora who has a family fortune and he's decided he's going to retire from being a detective and just manage his wife's fortune and her liquor. There is more drinking in these two movies than practically any movie that you'll ever see. They're functioning alcoholics which you know is a contradiction in terms it's like life from Utica. Say how many drinks have you had? This will make six martinis. All right. Will you bring me five more martinis? Leo, line them right up here. Yes, ma'am. Maureen O'Sullivan comes to Nick Charles and says, I want you to find something's wrong with my father and I want you to find out what's going on with him. So he goes to visit this man named Wynant. And Wynant is um, a very skinny man. He's an inventor. And he uh, has a mistress. And when Wynant is going on a trip and he goes to his safe and he realizes that a lot of money is missing, a lot of stocks, a lot of money that he had put aside for his daughter when she married for Maureen O'Sullivan. So he goes to his mistress, Natalie Moorhead, and he says, something's going on. You have embezzled this money and I want it back by this afternoon and there's big trouble. All right. I'll give it to you. 25,000. That's all I've got. You're going to return every cent of it. That night, she's murdered and his ex-wife finds the body. <laughs> So they come to Nick and they say to Nick and Nora, will you solve this? Now Nora is, is always after Nick to go back to work. Not because she thinks he doesn't earn money, but because she loves the excitement of being a private eye. Wouldn't you like to do a little detecting once in a while just for fun? Can't you get to sleep? No. William Powell is so delicious in this part. He's the type of guy that no matter where he goes, some bum will come up and go, Hi Nick, how are you? Remember when you set me up five years ago? Hey, Nick. Nice guy. Set me up the river one time. Hi, Nick. Hello, face. Long time I no see. The dialogue is so, so funny. At one point, um, the police come and invade them uh, during the night, and they're going through their, their, all of their closets and their, their drawers, and at one point, this cop opens up his drawer, and Myrna Loy goes, What's that man doing in my drawers? <laughs> Got all this, with pre-code, all this kind of sexual innuendo stuff. And it's, the writing is right on top of it. The director was W.S. Van Dyke, who was famous. Like, you, they used to call him One Take Van Dyke. He would get done with the take and go, oh, that's good enough, let's go. Let's go on to the next one. It was, well, bam, bam, bam. This movie was shot in 12 days. And it made a million dollars. Remember the fun we used to have when we were both flat broke? Oh, don't I? Those were the good old days. Don't kid yourself, these were the good old days. They had teamed up Powell and Clark Gable and Myrna Loy in a movie called called Manhattan Melodrama, and they liked the two of them together. Louis Mayer was not sold on making her, giving her this part, because he thought she should just be a dramatic actress, but she knew a good thing when she saw it. Oh, Nick. The movie was such a hit that they followed it up almost immediately with After the Thin Man, which I think is even better than the first one. And After the Thin Man stars Jimmy Stewart in one of his early parts, and this incredible woman named Jessie Ralph. You remember Nick? How are you, Nicholas? The first Thin Man takes place in New York. Well, after the Thin Man takes place, they've come back from New York on the train. They're dead tired. It's New Year's. They get out of the train. They, they see all these people in the train station as soon as they, as they hit. The newsboys run over to them. The cops come up. The policemen. You know, it's, it's a mob scene. Everybody loves Nick Charles. Pick us up another Thin Man, will you, Nick? Oh, that was a great case, Nick. You'd take a case like that, wouldn't you, Nick? Uh, I only took that to please my wife. She wants some excitement. <laughs> well, I guess she had it. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. Two men tried to kill him. But he's not going to take any more cases. You can print that. That's my darling. Nora gets a call from her aunt, Catherine, who's played by Jesse Ralph. Uh, we'll postpone any discussion till after dinner. And they have to go over to her, to Nora's 
relatives. And when they get there, the whole room is filled with all these old character actresses. The butler answers the door, and he's so decrepit, they give the butler his coat, and the butler starts to stagger and fall over. Don't worry, it isn't catching. They prop him up and the butler says to Nick Charles, walk this way. Walk this way, sir. Well, I'll try. Nick, you pull yourself together. And that's where that bit comes from. And he hobbles away like this, you know. And when he gets into the room, he says to, he's greeting them all. And the one with the hearing aid, he says, how do you do? And she goes, speak up, young man, speak up. How are you? Don't mumble, young man, don't mumble. How are you? She's deaf. You're telling me. What'd you say? When you hear the chime, it will be exactly... Oh, Selma. So, they get involved in a murder, and they have to solve that. And it's all filled with sophisticated, fun dialogue. The, the, the clothes, the look, everything about it is, is high 30s. At this particular juncture in film history, it was the height of the Depression, and people wanted to go to the movies and see movies with rich people and get out of their poor circumstances. So MGM put all the money and all the gloss into this, and it paid off. They subsequently made five or six more sequels to The Thin Man, but they were never quite as good as these first two. There have been many teams um, in movie history uh, that have got, had sort of comic backgrounds. Tracy and Hepburn come to mind, but nobody matched that the perfect, the perfect timing that William Powell and Myrna Loy had. Don, you got to pack. Yes, that's right. Pack, pack. I must pack. Are you packing, dear? Mm hmm. Yes, darling. I'm just putting away this liquor. I think you're going to have a great, great holiday watching William Powell and Myrna Loy in W.S. Van Dyke's The Thin Man and After the Thin Man. Happy Thanksgiving. Right, gang? Hey, get ready. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's you were dancing with some illiterate, and he points over to Penny Singleton, and she goes, My parents were married! And he goes, The popcorn can't be beat.